Jim. Dude, did you know Nevik was coming? What are you talking about? Nevik? Yeah, like troops, paramilitary mercenaries. There's a military cruiser docked to the base. There's men with guns everywhere. Major bad vibes. I can't even tell you. Where's Braddock? He's behind closed doors with the guy who seems to be in charge. Don't even get me started on him. I think I heard him asking about you. I didn't know whether to tell you to come in or warn you to stay away. Well, I'm already here. We're going around in circles. I'm here now. We're investigating, and we'll reassess the situation once all the facts are in hand. Ah, Peyton, is it? Thank you for coming. Mr. Braddock, if we could have the room. Pardon me, but this is his office. Jim, don't. Don't make waves. Not now. Looks like you got everyone good and freaked out. That's why you're here? Hmm. I can see why you're so well respected around here. A natural leader. I am here, you could say, to provide perspective. You mean Nevek's perspective? Well, considering the resources we've expended to make this effort possible, one could say that that is the perspective. I don't work for Nevek. Indeed. But you take the credits Nevek pays you, so... Perhaps I can prevail upon you to hear me out? <laughs> I'm sure that you'll come to realize I'm not here to dismantle Braddock's operation, but to make sure that it counts for something. Why are you here? Your family, correct? I understand that motivation better than you think. So, tell me, is there some other priority? Some new agenda that you place ahead of your family's safety? Something more important to you now than ever seeing them again? Hmm? <laughs> of course not. Let me tell you why I'm here. I'm here for the human race. Not just for my son's future, but for all the children of Earth to escape extinction. And there is nothing, and no one, that I will allow to get in my way. That's all. The Green, have we uh, located that Dr. Roman yet? Please, my experiments are in a delicate phase. For any controlled demonstration, I simply need more time. You'll have all the time you need, Dr. Kovac. As long as it's not more than 90 minutes. Please, tell Commander Eisenberg I am at his disposal, whatever he needs. Is there some problem?
suggest you keep your mind on your work. Hey, those Nevagoons just dropped off a box of parts for your rig. Something about charging a drained battery, like those big Zeus numbers on the fueling depots. All right, I think we go claw arm with this one. Wire up the fingers, make them into jumper clamps. Yeah, that could work. And then I cranked it to the nines with some Primo booster packs. I lifted off some old T-190s. Pack wrap power for the win, right? <laughs> so check it. Your claw arm is juiced. Pump it and you can charge batteries in a flash. Got a feeling it would charbroil an acrid in a few seconds too. But you let me know, okay? Above and beyond as always, kid. Oh, and I'm calling it the shock jumper. Now get out there and shock jump some things. I want the Roche begging for one so I can tell him to stuff it. <laughs> Really cramps my style with those mercs everywhere. If they don't clear out soon, I might have to strike out to make my fortune. Build a cabin out by Shaq's Peak, settle down. Maybe build myself a nice robot girl. One with freckles, excellent bone structure. Mm. Sweet, let's do this thing. Always a pleasure, my man. Welcome back. See now, that's how I know you're a connoisseur. Good deal, good deal. You be careful out there, kiddo. that the Corona ship across from the hangar is being kept from falling into the ravine by these moorings? It's more complicated than that, but the moorings are supporting a substantial amount of the superstructure. So, theoretically, if you cut the moorings at B-26, K-22, and L-9, the ship would collapse under its own weight and drop into the ravine? Well, something like that. Interesting. Uh, why are you asking? Oh, no reason. Just curious.
The situation around here is quickly becoming unbearable. These are dark times. Still no idea why they're here. Ranch's soldiers took his guitar away on account of it being an unnecessary distraction. I'll give him an unnecessary distraction.
run down the holes, Jim. Uh, these troops are edgy.
that wasn't so hard. And he says, without a trace of irony, Oh, you must be the weather girl. <laughs> uh -oh. So, I'm staring daggers. He knows he stepped in it, but he's too daft to figure out why. Oh, sorry, weather woman? <laughs> Finally, I say, well, my doctorate's in atmospheric sciences, so, yeah, I'm the bleeding weather girl, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dry, poor me.
James, we're on the right track. I can smell it. I've triangulated the approach vectors of dozens of storms, and I think I've narrowed down their likely direction of origin. And we're right about those storm acred. There's every indication they're carriers of the pure stuff as well. Ah, uh, sure. But look, Doc, I gotta tell you. Braddock's out of Coronas. Nevik paramilitary pulled rank, benched him. The new Commandant is bad news. I don't know how much he knows, but he's looking for you. I think you should clear out. I know a place you'll be safe. James, you're being a little dramatic. We're close to the ultimate jackpot. With this knowledge, we could hold all the cards, do you see? Please trust me on this. I've been dealing with Nevik nonsense for years. There's no better protection than having something they want, something that you can bargain with. I'll watch my back, I promise. Now listen, I cooked up some subterrestrial resonance samplers. I'm getting pretty close to where the signal has settled down. You still reading me? Damn, I was afraid of that. Always a bitch getting into reception past Shaq's peak. I'll have to fill you in when I get back. Jim out.
Let's see what we got here. Where does this go? 